Welcome back, everybody, to some more Grand Tactician The Civil War. Well, the latest patch that I added after, or at the beginning of the last episode is now available to all. Uh, so any of you who have the game should notice uh, these updates now, including that big one to how uh, strategic points on the battlefields work. And there's also a new battlefield that's been added, as well as a new historic battle. But for the start of this episode, I want to add a new patron unit. I want to give a big shout out to Jason Heyman, who has uh, joined up as a patron and uh, is a veteran himself. He was in Kuwait. And uh, Jason, thank you for your service. We are grateful for that, uh, like several others who uh, have served who are patrons as well. We're, we're appreciative for all of you. And uh, he wanted me to add a unit, the uh, 2nd Battalion, 137th Infantry, which traces its lineage back to the 1st Kansas Volunteers. So they are a Kansas unit. Uh, we're going to add them to the Army of the West. It'll take some time, about 23 days for them to join, but I don't expect a lot of combat uh, in the next few weeks anyway. Uh, we're settling in for winter, and I would imagine that in the spring we will make the big push to try and end this war. Uh, so for now, we're going to try to get the armies built back up. Let's go ahead and dive into today's episode. So you can see now that uh, armies such as the Army of Northern Virginia have gone into winter quarters. That should help a lot uh, with getting our numbers built back up, that disabled number going down and the number of available men going back up. We have industrialization one in policies now. We don't have any available policies, though, to be able to get industrialization two. Uh, so I'm going to have to look at ways to reduce this somewhere else. I'm not sure that we've got anything available at the moment, though. Uh, I like the idea of, well, that's an act. That's not even a policy, so it's not really something we can undo. Ah, uh, boy. I don't know. I don't think there's anything really I've got available to me at the moment that is going to help anything. Now, there are no Union troops currently in Kentucky, so if I can just move... Johnston over here into Louisville and take Louisville before the Army of the Southwest makes its way back into Kentucky. Uh, I think we'll have Kentucky finally secede from the Union, although it looks like the Army, of, eh, the Army of Mississippi's in Covington, so that may not work after all. So let's get the First Corps under Richard Anderson over here. We're going to try to squeeze the Army of the Southwest, and then I'll probably go ahead and move the second corps up to deal with the army of the mississippi they've only got 2300 men i could probably just send a division up there to deal with them all right there they go at long last the army of the potomac the second corps the coast division they're all shooting across west virginia uh, toward ohio where i would expect they're coming after me um, let's go ahead and start pulling breckenridge back to cincinnati get him in range of these other units so that I can reinforce him if need be. So he's not just 15,000 men fighting by himself because what we've got headed there, uh, we've got 15,000 men in the second corps. We've got the first corps with another 18,000 men. We've got the army of Tennessee, or army of the Tennessee with however many he's got. Yeah, there's a lot coming that way. And then once that happens, we'll probably have to think about moving north with the Army of Northern Virginia again, which is back up to 62,000 strong and climbing now that we're in winter quarters. All right, looking over the Army of the Mississippi, I'm going to go ahead and promote uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest to Division Command uh, of Breckenridge's Cavalry Force. He was a brigade commander. We'll put Henry Heath in charge of that brigade, uh, Forrest Brigade. So I think that will definitely work out better. Let me show you the four stats and why I chose to do that. Uh, highly rated pretty much everywhere. Three and four stars. Uh, so definitely worth it, I think. So we're kind of keeping an eye on what's happening over here. Third Corps is going to come down here, take Cincinnati. If we can take Coving Covington, Kentucky, uh, I think we'll get Kentucky to secede, although it looks like the Army of the Ohio is about to make a move into Louisville. There's industrialization too. Let's settle in, take Cincinnati, and then move across the border into, Co into Covington. I'm just moving the Army in the Mississippi headquarters so it's a more central location. I'm watching the First Corps over here because I want to make sure they're staying in supply because they're surrounded by Union armies at the moment. Mountain Department has 
2,200 men, Army of the Southwest, 4,600. Army of the West has almost 20,000. They could handle them by themselves. And we've got another 15,000 there under Anderson. All right, there's Covington. That should give us Kentucky. Although I don't know what the Army of the Ohio is doing, so we'll see. The French invasion continues. French reinforcements arrive. Uh, so Mexican forces in retreat down in France, where French intervention is still at 57, down in Mexico, I should say, still at 57%. Okay, the Army of the Ohio has crossed into Kentucky, so let's deal with them. I'm not sure why we haven't already engaged, but I would imagine that's about to happen. All right, looks like it's going to be the Army of the Southwest we take on first with the First Corps of the Army of the Mississippi. The battles are going to be in the West, I think, for the foreseeable future. Another battle at the Wabash and Erie Canal. We just fought a battle there not too long ago. This is just before Christmas. So we're fighting this about a week or so before the historic Battle of Stones River. So there were some battles that, you know, that happened this time of year. They just weren't nearly as common. It's also a couple of weeks after the historic Battle of Fredericksburg. 36,000 men under General Anderson, only 6,000 men for the Union. This should be fun. All right, so those numbers were not exactly accurate. Well, they are for now, but um, they will eventually be accurate because I have reinforcements coming. It's 16,000 to 6,000 right now. Uh, but the men are coming. Uh, there's a lot more coming. So I'll go ahead and start pressing because I could win even with the amount that I have right now. But we'll get reinforcements in 15 hours, which will be after midnight. All right, so what we're going to do this time is we're going to test out a little theory here. We're going to send our cavalry up to his evacuation point, see if we can send the infantry around to engage, and of course we're going to get reinforcements on the next day, see if we can cut him off from retreat and maybe destroy this entire 6,000 man force. All right, I think I've spotted him. He's up here in the north part of the map, and it looks like we may be actually drawing him toward us. So we've got Chatham going this way. We're going to push him up to Sudley Church. This is a really difficult spot right here, as we've seen before on this map. Uh, it's And by the way, doesn't this look cool that it's wintertime now? <laughs> um, but you've got this hill right here. You've got this crossing. Uh, it's a tough spot to fight if we get stuck fighting in there, which I hope I don't. So we'll move everybody up. We're going to move up to, to cover this crossing. That's Lindsay's Brigade and DK's Cowboys. They're going to be responsible for that. End of the day, which means our reinforcements will be arriving. All right, here come our reinforcements. Somehow, my cavalry division, when I was doing the deployment phase, I messed up and brought them down here. Uh, but the good news is, here come our reinforcements. We're going to send McCulloch's division up here as well. So we'll get some infantry and cavalry up there. And we're going to set the trap and hopefully close it in on these guys and finish them once and for all. Because we've got a lot of Union reinforcements coming west. So if I can destroy these 6,000 men, that's 6,000 fewer they have to gang up on us when those other units arrive. All right, I'm going to go ahead and keep Jones's cavalry here because we're going to send Clark's division up here to help them out. I think we'll bring them in over here on this side. He does have one unit that's staying up here, but McCulloch's division's on their way up there to cover that spot, and we're going to drive them off if we can. Sterling Price is going to come in up here. We're going to have this guy surrounded on every side if possible. Let's get the Missouri Bushwhackers. Where's their division commander? Randolph. Let's get them over here as well. Start bringing in the artillery. I shall bring Clark in on this side. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think that'll work. What's the DK's Cowboys? They're expert scouts. All right, the battle's going to happen here at the Cushing Farm, it appears. Go ahead 
go ahead and start engaging. Let's put Haskell right there. Fayetteville Light Infantry with Perrin next to them. I'm waiting on the artillery to get moved up. That's Bonner's division. Let's bring them right down in here. All right, it's going to be DK's Cowboys and Lindsay's Brigade for a little while by themselves. These are really small units. You get 266 men in that brigade. This is a Union Army that's taken a lot of attrition already. Alright, we've got his escape route covered. Let's make sure he doesn't have another one somewhere. I don't think he does. He's got nowhere to go. I'll bring Sterling Price's division down to here. We'll start squeezing the rope a little tighter. Keep in mind, ammo here. They're down to 52 rounds already. They'll go through that fast. And do have infantry coming to their support. We've already shattered that little unit there. Still waiting on quite a bit of our force to get in position. Speed things up a little bit. All right, the noose is tightening. gonna be like Custer's last stand here. He's gonna have nowhere to go. Let's push Clark forward. Can't retreat, dude. All right, these guns aren't firing. I want to get them closer so they will. But over here. Let's see where his strength is now. 5,600. We've got 37,000. We've got to start tightening things up here. I'm going to bring more around over here. I'll bring Lindsay up that way. Could just ride this whole cavalry division in there. I think they're all mounted. They are. So that is Missouri Bushwhackers, Shelby Iron Brigade, and the 25th Texas Cavalry. This could be interesting. Let me pause for a second because I want to get some perks upgraded here. Cold Steel. think we might go ahead and do this 
So let's bring them up. Get them in position, then we might charge them into the lines. See if we can finish these guys. We've also got Lindsay's brigade we could do that with. So we've got five brigades of cavalry. We can mount all of them up and just send them all charging into the lines and see what happens. Although I've had poor success with this in the past. We've also got the 5th Kentucky Mounted Infantry over here. We've actually got six units of mounted, mounted men. Got nowhere to go, dude. Nowhere. Okay, as soon as this division's in position, I think we'll go ahead and make this happen. All right, let me pause. Charge. 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 I mean, I could have waited and just worn him down with attrition, but this is more fun. All right, let's watch this happen. Well, those three went in fast. These ones, not so much. I'm not sure why. Why are those three taking so long? Darn it, come on, guys. Get in there. Jeez, whole division took forever to go. I want to pause and see what the numbers look like now. He's down to 4,600 men. Well, as expected, my charge did not do what I'd hoped, and all of my men are running away. How's the enemy got units withdrawing from the field? I don't know where they're withdrawing to. I don't see another escape point for them. I've got all of them covered. All of my cavalry units broke. Except for the Missouri Bushwhackers, they're still intact. All right, let's push up. wounded. Hey, good wounded. Commander of DK's Cowboys. Yeah, I don't know how he's withdrawing from the field when I have all those areas covered. I, so I guess that doesn't really matter. It probably just means he can't withdraw as a as an army. But the individual units can still break and run from the field. I guess that's what, what is happening here. You gotta watch here because it looks like Randall might break. He's just going to have all his units individually withdraw from the field. He's down to 3,100 men. Yeah, 
There they go. I think there's just tower left among units who haven't broken yet. And he's probably going to in a minute. There he goes. Alright. We got the Shelby Foot Brigade over here. He's retreating. Alright, so he did find a way out. Over here. Oh, look at that. I don't remember seeing that before. I don't know if that appeared or what. Or if I just didn't cover. Maybe I should have had every single exit point covered. Alright. Alright, here we go. Second Corps Army of the Potomac in contact with the Third Corps Army of the Mississippi. Here's our first contact with those eastern units that are coming west now. We'll see what we're facing. The Battle of Ohio River, Kentucky, January 10th, 1863. So pretty even odds to start. 17,000 for me, 15,000 for him. Uh, the question, of course, is what do reinforcements look like? I don't appear to be getting any. Really? Wow. That's actually really surprising and unfortunate. Because I do have everybody set to do that but uh first corps of the army of the potomac is arriving in seven hours army of the mississippi arriving in 10 hours at which point he's going to have a pretty substantial substantial advantage on me so uh we're fighting on the perryville battlefield this might end up being kind of tough for us all right here he is we've got Five hours before the first corps arrives. Oh, hello. Stop, 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 stop. I did not see all of those men there. We've got to stop these guys and stop them right now. Because we've got a move order that isn't going to work. Maybe too late to stop Breckenridge. Stop right there. Stop. Ah, there we go. He's going to stop right there. All right, so we're going to have to move in quickly to help him out. So let's get the French Zouaves up here next to him. No, not like that. Just go in right there. First, That's first Montero rifles that are engaging right there. Let's get Rhett up here next to him. And then we're going to have to bring in the rest of the army as quickly as we can. D.H. Hill's division. Let's get them moved up. Let's get Nathan Bedford Forrest up with his cavalry as quick as we can. don't have a lot of time. Let's get our artillery up. Where can I put the artillery? Maybe back here somewhere. And at least those guys, I'll have to move this, this battery. Okay. Alright, Montero rifles, do your thing. Oh, this is going to be tough. Lone Star Brigade in next to them. Montero Rifles are pulling back already, which doesn't surprise me because they were all by themselves out front. Rally, boys, rally. It's alright if they have to reform back here to the rear, that's what they gotta do. Where's my other brigade? How did Lawrence end up all the way over there with the French two offs? Kind of strange to see the Irish brigade fighting in the west. Zouaves already lost. Oh, they're breaking. Darn it. Let's 
Come on, Breckenridge, reform. Oh, what a disaster this has started out so far. And there goes Rhett. He's all by himself. He's got no chance. Jeez. Get out of there. Don't turn around, though. Alright, let's get up here and engage. Oh, these guys got shotguns? <laughs> That's not helpful. Artillery's finally getting moved up. Come on, guys, reform. Reform. And our division commander got killed or wounded there. That doesn't help. What is he doing? They're already right there. You might as well charge these guys. Come on, boys. All right, looks like we did get these guys to reform, so that's good news. Let's wait for the other brigade to arrive. Cavalry. Hit the Irish Brigade. Let's help out. Rock City Guards. Ah, uh, the battle is lost. The morale of your troops is cracked. Try to organize an orderly retreat. Yeah. That's where we are. Man. As soon as that first brigade broke... It was all downhill from there. That was brutal. Fighting the boys from the Army of the Potomac now. Different story. We're going to have to concentrate our forces and try to whip these guys on the field. All right, so we're going to bring the First Corps. 
Army of Mississippi over. Third Corps is retreating toward West Virginia, unfortunately. Uh, so we're only going to have First and Second Corps available to us as we try to concentrate in Louisville. But that'll have to do for now. I don't know why the Army of Mississippi headquarters is also retreating. I guess they were there. Army of the West, we're going to bring into southwest Indiana to try to contain these couple of Union units there. I don't think we can send anybody else west. I think we're going to have to hold tight with the rest of these men in the east. Let's see where we're at with the uh, Army of Northern Virginia, the Army of Tennessee. Army of Tennessee has got 20,000 men. Army of Northern Virginia is up to 75,000 now as we start to refill the ranks. Since we haven't been fighting, uh, those units that have been low on numbers are starting to reconstitute. They're starting to get uh, reinforcements, so they're filling those units back up. So that 75,000 men is huge for me right now. Uh, AP Hill has 29,000 men in his corps. Longstreet is back up to 30,000 in his corps. So maybe, just maybe, once we get into February, we might have to start thinking about making an advance north to hold any more units from coming this way. Let's see. We might be able, since the Army of the Potomac, or the Army of Northern Virginia has 75,000 men, we might be able to send the Army of Tennessee west to help with this. All right, they're going. Hold on here. They're going west, which means they're headed toward the Army of the West, which I think I'm going to have to pull back. Let's pull them back to St. Louis. Continue to try to concentrate the Army of Mississippi. It's going to take some time, though, because we're still losing the Third Corps. Okay, 1st Corps Army of Mississippi is going to take on 1st Corps Army of the Potomac plus any reinforcements that arrive. This will be our last battle for this episode. Lots of action coming our way. We're in January 19th, 1863. Another fight in southern Indiana. All right, our starting strength, 14,000 to his 19,000. Uh, let's take a look, though, at the reinforcement schedule, if any. Second Corps arriving in 16 hours. Army of the West arriving in 28 hours. Union, Second Corps, five hours. Army of the Mississippi, five hours. Army of the Tennessee, 18 hours. This is a major, major fight that's about to brew here. So we're going to have to think wisely about our deployment. I don't know if the rest of my troops will be coming from the same spot. It appears they will. So let's do it. All right. Looks like. Sumner's Corps has arrived with an additional 13,000 men for the Union. So let's take a look at the strength report now. He's got 32,000 men on the field to my 14,000. We're waiting 10 more hours for the second corps to arrive. Who else did he just have arrive? Pope. I hope that 32,000 included that. 36,000. No, it didn't. So we are outnumbered significantly better than 2 to 1. The good news is we're getting to the crossings, I think, before he does. But he looks like he may just go up and get around me anyway. Where are we sending Lee? Oh, we were sending him to grab that other objective. Nah, it's not going to work. Let's send him over here. Let's see if we can rush the 5th Kentucky Mounted Infantry up. To that crossing. We'll try to contest this wherever we can. Just don't have a lot of men. Now let's see if we can start building some breastworks at these crossings. Do anything we can to slow him down while I wait for my reinforcements.
Gotta remember which way to build these. Right click. There we go. Build them, boys. Let's do the same over here. Uh, it looks like that. Uh, I guess that crossing is still there. Anything we can do. All right, he's coming. I don't know that I can hold him with the men that I've got. We're sure gonna try. All right, DK's Cowboys, let's get you dismounted. They're going to cross right there. I didn't even think there was a crossing there. So much for covering the bridges, huh? Let's get Lindsay over here. Yeah, those breastworks are pointless if he comes at me from a different angle, which is what he's doing. No, that meant nothing at all, because he just crossed wherever he wanted to. bring Clark over. We're going to have to consolidate our forces some. Let's bring the 5th Kentucky Mountain Infantry over. We can bring the River Valley Brigade. I don't know. We can probably keep them there. Just, we're waiting on their orders to fire at long range. How long do we have before we get the reinforcements? Ah, he's got 37,000 men. Eight hours still until the second corps arrives. Ugh, I don't know about that. Let's look at the numbers on casualties. So far, so good. comes Meade's brigade, Ward behind him. Get back behind these breastworks, please. Oh, I didn't I didn't mean for Chatham's whole division to follow those orders, darn it. Chatham's wounded. I just wanted this brigade to get behind his breastworks. Johnson. bad. Oh, he got a cross over here? Darn it. Alright, Shelby Foot Brigade, get over here and get over here fast. Let's send Lindsay over here. At least to slow these guys down. He's only got 900 men. Oh, this is bad. Come, oh, he's got four, five, six brigades right here. Come on, Lee, keep pouring some fire into these guys. Oh, 
man, they're just overrunning my center. Come on, get there. Now he's sending reinforcements over here. I'm just... This is... It's all bad. It's all bad. And I don't think I can hold on for the reinforcements to arrive. Darn it. I just don't have the men. I'm still waiting to consolidate my army and I just haven't been able to do it. Eight hours. No chance. No chance I hold off for eight hours. We gotta get out of here. I need to keep my army intact. Alright. It's a minor Confederate defeat, so it's not a huge deal. The main issue is, of course, that I already have one core retreating. I think that's actually the same core. Because those are the men I was already fighting with. So that could have turned into a huge battle with epic consequences for the war, but instead he drives me off too quickly. I probably should have sat back, but I was afraid he would grab all those objectives, and I thought if I could hold at some crossings, I'd be able to hold him off until reinforcements arrived. It just didn't work out that way. Okay, so the first corps is going to be retreating all the way to Nashville, it appears. So this is where the problem comes in, because my first corps is retreating to Nashville, my third corps is already retreating east into West Virginia. Uh, so the idea of being able to consolidate my forces is not working out so well, at least not at Louisville. So what I'm going to probably have to do is go ahead and order a withdrawal and actually surrender Louisville to the Union for now. So we can consolidate this army somewhere south. So I'm thinking probably Nashville. Because that's where the other one's going. And then as soon as the third corps under Breckenridge gets to Charleston, we'll go ahead and, and move him down toward Nashville as well. That also means we've got to issue different orders to the Army of Tennessee, which is actually headed west. Because they were headed toward Louisville. We're going to reroute them, let's say, Knoxville for now. And then we'll kind of go from there. But I'm going to wrap it up right there. Let me know your thoughts about all that. If you uh, would like to have your own unit in the game, just click on that link for Patreon. And you can sign up to be a supporter that way. And I'm grateful to every one of you who have done so. Uh, I know during these tough times, a lot of folks are having a uh, difficult time with work. I am one of those people since my work is completely shut down with Rachel's Challenge. Can't speak in schools about kindness when schools don't have assemblies. So uh, every little bit helps, and we greatly appreciate that. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.